Hey, what's up, guys? It's been a while, and for sure you're wondering where did I take this T-shirt, Serbian T-shirt. As you know, I'm a Serbian team captain, and today we're just going to play against Cameron in the World Cup, so I'm supporting Serbia. We need win. We lost to Brazil 2-0 in a pretty tough match, I gotta be honest, but tomorrow is the new day, and let's just hope for the best. Uh, support us, and hopefully... Uh, Switzerland Friday is gonna finish and decide everything uh, let's just go with one very special opening for you so let's just hope for a cheerful day Serbia to beat Cameron and from another point of view to teach you absolutely crazy Bayorla Gambit or whatever it is it's believe it or not happens after the e4 e6 and French opening itself so let's go with it and let me just show you how does it happen after e4 e6 looks like psychologically want to play the french defense and after they go with d4 you go with a specialty for bullet and blitz chess b5 it reminds me on some other openings and uh, some gambit but really crazy stuff so get ready for something really special if they don't want to accept the gambit if they don't want to take it on b5 and they go just with the knight f3 you just have to say okay let it be you don't want to take on f3 i'll develop on b7 and i'm gonna go after the pawn on b4 it reminds me on sokolsky uh, or orangut and gambit with b4 first move for white and when they play b4 and you play e5 you just take the central pawn and you just give up the pawn at b5 fairly good exchange for black so when they play bishop d3 you break in the center and for example if they play d takes c5 they can never touch your pawn because e4 pawn will be hanging from another point of view i played quite a big number of games when they played castles you just go with a queen on c7 if they play knight c3, you just uh, solidify your center with this. Sooner or later, they will play some a3. But if they play rookie one, you go with knight here. And your knight goes on g4. And all of a sudden, they can see the point. They go here. I go knight g4, threatening here. If you defend, now let's go. All of, I can even take an f3 and play knight e5, and I'm doing great. Uh, so they have difficulties. So they can play that. You go h3. Not a big deal, buddy. Uh, I can just play, for example, knight c6. I can play h5 followed by knight g4. And those are some very interesting uh, possibilities. Of course, in this case, since they want to go with some d6, I can't go with anything else uh, seemingly but uh, to go with uh, possibly d6 to stop that and to play more or less normal game after knight bd7 or knight c6. But I, I would like to keep my bishop and b7 open for the time being. If they play after c3, keeping the solid pawn structure in the center, you just go with c4, bishop c2, and knight f6. It reminds me of St. George opening e4, a6. Uh, this is a little bit improved version. Uh, okay, you have the shaky pawns on c4 and b5, but you just have to keep in mind, if they ever go with any, uh, for example, e5, your knight goes on d5, you take the center, you've just opened up the bishop and you break the center with d6 and knight d7. Your bishop goes on e7 and delay short castle because you don't want to go under the attack and you may attack them afterwards. If they play solid, knight bd2, solidifying uh, their position, playing logical in the center, you go d6, castles and knight bd7. What's the point? In e5, don't take on e5. Even it looks very uh, logical. No, you always go with the knight d5. And you wait. If they take, you're happy because you just have this bishop. If they go knight e4, you go back on e7. Afterwards, you may go with queen c7, long castle g5, or you may go with uh, short castle and h6. I'm not a big fan of short castle too early in these positions, but when they have short castle themselves, we can even go with the queen c7 and we don't need to castle because they will always break us. I'm talking about the long castle with a4, but you can go completely crazy with some g5 at some point if you want to go crazy without castle with the king on e8. Or if you play queen c7, you can just go with the knight f6 playing solid game. And afterwards, when you exchange the knight on e4 and bring another knight on f6, for example, let's say they go rookie one. 
you just go queen c7 and uh, when they go they just develop their piece i don't want to play castle first but you go knight, knight knight to f6 you can go for example you can go some knight f4 here you can go this knight f6 but you can simply go uh i don't want to play uh, castle or whatever there i still don't have time for g5 even though you can even consider these type of crazy ideas in some of these games and for example to take by knight or uh, you know like taking even by king is good and then rook g4 or rook g6 rook g7 rook g8 doubling rooks knight f4 and stuff like that i'm just giving you some interesting ideas apart from this of course that you may play like knight e4 uh, queen c7 bishop d2 knight knight f6 and then you want to exchange everything in which case whatever they do like queen e2 you take they take you take they take the rook is hanging you go with castle and you absolutely have solid position just try to settle your knight and afterwards break with b4 position is good uh, if they go with knight bd2 d6 so i'm just uh, explaining you types of positions that can happen here so they don't play e5 but they go rook e1 bishop e7 any a4 you always go with a6 solid they take you take they take the rook you take by quinn and you attack the center any e5 you just go with knight e5 don't take on e5 let them take on d6 and if they play knight e4 bringing the knight into the center you just go back to e7 and you have a good position it's nice if they go p3 nothing you just play queen c7 defending on c4 they take take they go queen e2 to take it you just go castle my plan is to uh, settle both of these rooks to go on c8 and b8 and get a good control of the game you can't play queen c4 anyhow because i'm just going to capture play rook c8 and now you have problems on these two squares you can't hold with bishop d3 because i can even play knight e4 and eventually take on c4 and you're gonna end up with more of these weaknesses in the game eventually so all things considered uh, these are the ideas if they play flexible if if they don't want to accept the gambit if they accept decide to accept the gambit then 99 percent of players will do that because there is no reason not to take the pawn for free you just go with your favorite move bishop b7 you just go after the pawn and what is this you actually play an improved version of some uh saint george no uh, sorry owen's opening an old one e4 b6 d4 bishop b7 and if you remember an old uh owen's uh, opening that used to be popular like 50 years ago was f5 nowadays this gambit is refuted it's refuted because when you go with this and when you take they just go queen h5 and when they take they just take on g6 and the whole point of this position is when they play bishop g7 they just have to go with some not g takes h7 even though it looks the most logical but they just go with some uh queen f5 threatening mate and when they go knight f6 completely crazy move bishop h6 and when you play like this g takes h7 followed by queen bishop h1 queen g6 this one queen h6 and it's a winning position what's the difference between uh bear like gambit or whatever you call it you name it after e4 e6 d4 b5 bishop b5 you go with the bishop b7 and whenever they go with anything like bishop d3 queen e2 you may go with f5 because pawn is on e6 so they don't have all these kinds of tricks so let me just show you what happens lots of guys play most logical move to knight c3 to defend the pawn you pin this knight and you threaten to take on e4 they they decide to go with f3 already create some weaknesses on the dark squares and king is weak you give check that's a very nice move and queen h5 <laughs> uh, make sure to always uh, be on top of your task you threaten to take the bishop either by taking first on c3 or to taking on b5 when they play bishop d3 to defend and to say okay i'm up a pawn what do you want i want your pawn but in the center now they can't play knight e2 because f3 is hanging that was the point of queen h5 altogether with threatening on bishop and b5 they say but i want to play knight e2 no you cannot i have a bishop and before but i want to go with something else what buddy bishop e3 not a big deal f5 i just want to open up everything so i sucked one pawn now i'm sucking second you say i want to take it i'm sucking third you say i want to take it 
I'm sucking forward and I'm putting my king in safety. And believe me, when you take and I take by rook, my rook is going to come on e8. And look at this. Don't tell me that you can play with all these pieces being like this. I have a fantastic version of some Portuguese gambit type of games where I'm down three pawns. But the initiative is on my side, right? So after knight c3, bishop b4, we've just realized that the f3 could be dangerous. Let's say they go bishop d3, hyper solid. Okay, I play knight f6, you go queen e2, and you say, finally, I'm up a pawn and everything is good. Remember the ideas here. You can remember moves just like that because that's not a point of this opening. Just remember the ideas. So you break the center, c5. They can't do anything but to either play a3. Or to play d takes c5. I won a game once in bullet. D takes bishop takes. Knight f3. I went with the knight g4 threatening on f2. The guy played the most logical. I played knight c6. And here I want to go with Siberian trap. Queen c7, knight d4. We had it in Smith Mora. We had it in some other openings. My opponent played h3. I said let it be buddy. I'm going to go with h5. Defend my knight. If you ever take. Uh, you can't move your knight anywhere. Because... I can penetrate here and the mate is inevitable. Uh, or I can first go with g3, for example. But of course, queen h4 and everything is so obvious because bishop f4 doesn't seem to be working because of this. So when you take, I go on g3 and the mate is going to happen afterwards. Everything thanks to the bishop on c5. So my opponent played bishop g5. Like, let me just complete my development. And he completely forgot about this move. Why b8? Because I don't want to give him knight b5 with tempo. And here, I'm threatening knight d4, deflection, and I'm, I want to mate him eventually. If I play knight d4, if he takes, for example, he plays something stupid, whatever, knight f4, whatever, you play knight d4, he takes, and queen h2 mate. What a nice one. So after queen a2, c5, they can go a3. That, that is very annoying, but you just take here and play c4. When they take, you take the pawn, they go like this, queen c7. Now you go after the c3 pawn. I want to play d5 and go queen c3 to win on the spot. If you play bishop d2, I just take on c2 and I'm not so... Okay, uh, I have you have a bishop here, but I also have some weaknesses to play against. So this is an absolutely unclear game if you ask me. Apart from knight c3, after bishop b7, they can play queen e2. Here I have especially interesting gambit variations. You go with f5. Let me just show you the most logical thing and how you refute it. They take and say, what do you want? I take on g2. You say, queen h5. Your king is almost made it. I say, dream about it. They take on g6. I play bishop g7. They take another pawn. I go king f8. They take knight. I take by king and I'm threatening queen. When they realize that after queen g6 threatening my bishop, I take on h1. Take a look at this one. I'm only, I, I'm up an exchange and they have two pawns, but king is weak. They're absolutely undeveloped and they have a pretty chaotic uh, pieces. I'm talking about the queen on g6 and bishop on b5. h2 is hanging. I just need to solidify myself. I, I s found a game where the guy played bishop g5, queen f8, correspondence game, which is good. Knight c6 threatening on d4. Queen b4 check trying to win the bishop. That's the point of queen f8. Taking on b2, threatening these two pieces. This guy went with king d2, knight d4, threatening this bishop and knight. Came up with this knight f3 to attack the knight on c3 with check. Took on c3, took on f3 first, and the guy resigned. What a nice and crushing game by black. You have to admit that it looks nice. On queen e2, f5, if they don't want to take and they just defend, you just take, boom, check, and I win the central pony friend and I'm winning. You say, but okay, you're now showing he takes f5 and f3. What if knight e2? Nothing. Knight f6? You can never play e5 because of bishop g2. You can never play e takes because of bishop g2. Now they don't even have check. And what happens when they go with f3? Nothing. Same thing. I play bishop e7. You go with this. I go with castle. And here, I just have to say this is probably the best thing that they can get. But I just go with some c5, knight c6. And I'm trying to take advantage of the possibly weak dark squares and somehow to ac activate my pieces. Of course, I never want to claim that in any of these positions you just have to be objectively good. But I'm just giving you some interesting ideas for blitz and bullet games. And finally, if they go with bishop d3, 
take a look at this one we go with the gambit uh, f5 don't ever worry about the king i'm gonna put a green color on the king it's not weak so when they go with e takes f5 take it they give check don't forget a big difference in comparison to owen's uh, refuted gambit is that the pawn is on e7 it makes a huge difference why because after g6 bishop g7 they take the pawn you uh, go and escape with your king on f8 what's the point when they take these two pawns and take the knight now their rook is hanging and they can't stop it queen g4 bishop here you just go with the queen e8 and uh, in the worst case scenario you have an interesting counter chances so this is good for those who like tactics who likes uh, active pieces who like craziness on you know like on the board and finally if f5 and they go queen e2 i'll go knight f6 i'll show you a couple of interesting tricks they uh, this is full of tricks they gotta play knight e2 here believe it or not what if they play f3 you just take take boom and you go with knight e4 so they cannot take by bishop because you have queen h4 and picking the bishop with uh, tempo you exchange queens you're up a pawn uh, you're gonna be up a bishop here so you're just so much better if they go bishop g5 i always teach my students don't defend the pawns or material by pinning the knights with the bishops they just take they take here they gotta take on f6 first they play knight c6 threatening knight pawn on d4 you go rook b8 threatening pawn on b2 you just go with d5 play bishop d6 and look at this castles castles very interesting position you have a very nice attacking chances here believe it or not how first of all they can't set the knight on e5 so it's not a good outpost for them second thing we have this bishop and third thing uh, if they play most logical knight c3 developing move you have queen f5 looks like you want to take here but you actually want to go with either rook f6 rook g6 or you want to go with queen h5 in some moments those who try to defend you just say not this time baby those who try to defend you say let it be but now i'm threatening rook f3 and to mate you on h2 you go h3 let's go with the second f3 so they can't play it but you say okay maya but what if i take well but if it didn't work when the knight wasn't an f6 now it's certainly it's gone, not going to work because i'm just gonna be completely winning f takes i just go like this i want to solidify myself with castles you take i may take by queen i may take by bishop but i just want to go with this this rook is about to die the queen is on the same file where the king is and finally do you remember when i told you that you have to play knight d2 you just go with c5 they take you take and take a look at this one i especially like the final line of the of the of this lecture they take on and they play knight f3 to develop you play castle they play castle all the time they want to accept the gambit except taking the pawn on b5 and now it's our turn i go knight c6 they take second pawn i go queen c7 they take third pawn i go rook a to e8 with the full activity of my pieces with siberian trap ideas with knight e4 knight g4 open f and e files black has to be considered at least dangerous hope that you like this lecture and let's just hope that serbia is gonna beat cameron and the, to have that decisive night that i'm gonna watch with my friend jovelic here in my city uh switzerland against serbia on friday night thanks for watching and hope uh, hopefully uh, you like this lecture thanks and see you next time bye bye